Hi, I'm James Ward, a platform evangelist at salesforce.com. Yesterday I started learning Gulp and I put together a little build that you might find useful. Uh, I built it so that I could build just the client side of an application that's based on AngularJS and Bootstrap. It has built into it an asset pipeline for less, does JavaScript, uh, JS hinting, concatenation and minification, also does some compression of images, and then make some small modifications to HTML pages for production mode. Uh, this build has two different modes, a development mode that you have a local server, and then it uses live reload to automatically reload changes, and then a production mode so that you can uh, test out the production assets as well. This Gulp build also has transparent Bower integration. And that Bower integration, what it does is it makes it so you don't have to use the Bower command line. You just update the Bower config file with your dependencies, and then automatically those dependencies get pulled down for you and put into the right place. So let's go take a look. Uh, if you want to try this out on your own, just clone my git repo. And in this project, what we have is app is the main source directory. We also have a bower.json that describes my client side dependencies, the gulp file.json, uh, JS, which is my build file for gulp, and then package.json, which is the, the node um, stuff. So, first, uh, let's take a look at the, the bower.json file here. So, you can see that I've defined two dependencies one on Angular Bootstrap and then one on bootstrap. Then uh, let's take a look at what's inside of that app directory. So we have in here the index.html file, which is going to be the, the uh, main file that we load our web application from. We have a little image to test with. We have a JavaScript file and a less file. So uh, the gulp file build, this is what defines the build. Let's take a look at that file. So there's a bunch of stuff in here. You can change paths around and stuff. Uh, there's a number of different tasks in here. Uh, I'm just going to be walking through a couple of the tasks, and you can feel free to check out the build on your own. But let's actually see how to use it. So once you've installed Gulp, you can just uh, run Gulp and then a task. If you don't run Gulp on this project with any tasks, then it gives you a little help. And so let's, uh, let's first run it in dev mode. So when I run it in dev mode, what it's doing is it's starting up a local server, and I can go open that up here in my browser. So there's localhost 5000, that's where my little app is running, you can see my app there. And I'm going to start up the live reload for this application. So this application is just static assets that are being transformed by the gulp build. So let's go take a look at some of those assets here. So let's go into app and let's go, let's first look at the HTML page. So this is just a basic HTML page. It's loading in the bootstrap, uh, my own CSS. It's loading Angular, um, the, the Angular bootstrap stuff, and then my JavaScript, and then just a little bit of uh, HTML. So that's, that's the HTML file. Let's go take a look at, uh, let's do, do the JavaScript next. So here is where I'm setting up the Angular application and, and doing a few things. So you can see that uh, here, if I type in a name, then I'm using binding in Angular, and you can see that there. So, so that's a little Angular part of this application. Um, so with all of these static assets, they're being watched now uh, by Gulp. And so I can make changes to, to any of these. Let's go back and change the index.html. And let's go say um, your name. And then I'm just going to save that file. You see the page refreshes real quick. And when we click back here, then we see your name. So all the files are being watched, so no matter which file we change, whether it's a JavaScript file or, uh, or if it's a, um, a CSS file or whatever, it's going to have the same behavior where it's automatically reloading these files based on, on those changes. So let's go see if that one worked. Yep, looked like that worked. Okay, um, go back to how it was. And then uh, CSS, of course, which is defined in less, would work the same way as well. So let's go change the background color here and just save that, and you'll see it refresh, and I get a nice, pretty red background. 
So, uh, so that's it. That's the that's the development mode with the auto refresh. You can see it's running all these tasks here behind the scenes whenever those file changes are detected. And uh, that's dev mode. Oh, there's one other thing I want to show here is the Bower. Uh, let's go back to Bower uh, JSON. So if I want to change a dependency here, um, let's say I just want to like downgrade Bootstrap to 3.1.0. Uh, as soon as I save that Bower.json file, you'll see that over here on the build side, it's now going to go update the Bower dependencies, and you'll see, it, hey, it now added uh, that Bootstrap 3.1.0, and now it's updated that, and we probably can't see that very easily in the browser, but um, trust that it, that it happened correctly. Let's uh, go back to how that was. And of course, when I save that again, then it's going to do the same thing. It's going to update the dependencies automatically for us. So I don't have to use the Bower command line. I just have this integrated workflow here. Uh, then um, let's also check out the production mode. So when I want to run this in production mode, uh, I wouldn't recommend running this actual server in production mode, but this will just allow us to preview the application uh, as it's been compiled. So now we're going to be working with the minified assets. This time we're going to have to re reload it manually because uh, we restarted the server there. But um, not seeing any difference, but if we go take a look at the source, then we'll see that it's automatically switched everything out to the minified versions. And so it's created the minified versions of these files and then switched them out uh, in the, the index.html automatically for us. So uh, we could also just run gulp dist and that will do everything except for start the server and then in the dist directory is where our whole static application is. And the cool thing is is that we could also just open this up in a file browser as well because it's just a static application. Um, let's go find my directory here. And if I go to, um, that's on my desktop, and then this one is gulp starter and then dist and then I can just load up that index.html and there it is. Should all be working normally because everything's just static files so we don't even really need a server. I mean we can put it on any server we want. So anyways that's the gulp starter project. Uh, check it out on github on my github github.com slash james ward slash gulp dash starter and let me know what you think. Thanks.